Hi, <clears throat> I am Opal Mitchell. I work for the Central Arkansas Library System, and um, I uh, actually work at the Nixon Library in Jacksonville um, as the assistant manager and the adult programmer. Um, okay, one of my dogs is not leaving me alone. She's she wants attention, so she's gonna sit in my lap while I talk. Um, I'm at home, obviously, doing this sewing 101 class today. Um, I'm going to go over briefly what I'm going to be uh, talking about today. This, this will be about an, about an hour, and if people have any questions, I'll, I'll take time to, to do questions. Oh, hi, Mitzi. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? <laughs> um, let's see. I'm going to cover... Uh, just the different parts of your machine, just kind of going over how to just really inspect it uh, when when you first get your machine or even if you've had it a while. I I did this um, this week. I, I literally kind of went all over my machine looking at everything. I even found a piece of tape on the back of my machine <laughs> that I didn't know was there that was just like a packing piece of tape that I missed totally whenever I first got my machine and didn't know it was there. It just was covering a hole on the back where um, I think it's a screw that you can undo to take the cover off to change out the light bulb. But um, yeah, there was several things that I had not paid attention to about my machine when I first got it. So um, so we're going to kind of go over it to, to show you, you know, you really do need to look over it and see what you have. Hey, Angela. Um, let's see. Um, and I also have a lot of presser feet. I bought a big set of them, and I'll go over some of the basic ones um, that are pretty typical to get with a machine. Um, and then other extra ones that might be handy that you might want to look into buying, possibly. Um, I am going to go over, um, like, showing you to uh, thread, thread your machine, because I noticed something interesting um, in my manual. I was reading my manual too, getting ideas for this class, because um, I learned actually quite a few small things that were interesting that I thought, well, I never noticed that, I never paid attention to that, and I didn't realize I could do that either. Just different little things that I would have known if I had read my manual, and I, you know, I, you're in such a hurry when you first get your machine to just start using it that you just kind of read what you need to read in order to get going type of thing. You know, you really don't pay attention. And it's so much new information, too. It's hard to absorb all of it. Um, all right. Um, let's see. So, threading. And then I'm going to wind a bobbin, too. Um, let's see. And do some testing um, to show you about tension and so forth. And I think that's about it. Um, tension is probably going to be one of the things we talk about. Um, and then the settings that you set on your machine that are pretty typical. Um, in the beginning, I kind of sort of knew, but I constantly referred to my uh, user manual as I was using my machine because I'd go, I don't really know. I don't, I really don't understand what these are. I know what they say they are, but I just was so overwhelmed with everything. I, it never really sunk in really good what, what the dials were and really what they're meant for, what what you are going to adjust when you're sewing to get what you want. So um, we're going to do that. And um, I did find out something really interesting. In a, I printed off a handout for, uh, it was a sewing, kind of like a sewing one-on-one -on -one class I did in person um, at the library. And one of the things in the handout that I had not read closely and paid attention to until I went, oh, wait, I had that issue with one of our sewing machines at work. Um, it said, um, if your needle, when you put your needle in your machine, if you do not insert it all the way up into there before you tighten the screw, um, when you're replacing it, that if you have a, uh, a thing on your machine that helps you thread your machine, when you pull it down to use it to pull it through the eye of the needle, it won't thread it through. And I just thought that that just didn't work properly on the one that we had at work. I had no idea that um, it was probably the needle was not in there correctly because we bought the machine. It was already, the needle was already in there. 
So I didn't think about it being not inserted in there correctly. So that's one of the things I'm going to check on whenever I get back to work and, and see if that was the issue because that's, that's what the thing was saying, that um, if it's not inserted at all the way. Um, it's, it's good to know how to change out your needle too. And they say every you're supposed to replace your needle ev after every project you do. I think that's very important if you're doing large projects. Um, for instance, uh, a quilt. Um, well, you probably would need to do it more than once on it, depending on the size of the quilt, but because uh, there's a lot of work involved in sewing involved in quilts. Um, but say clothing, um, a piece of clothing of some kind. Yeah, you might want to, depending on how big it is, um, you may want to replace your needle after you get done. Um, very small projects, um, I really don't believe that really is something you need to do. Um, and I was searching to buy needles last night on Amazon for our um, the library's serger. Because I, if you all watched last night when I was doing the... Uh, sewing machine cover um, I was using the serger and the needle broke on it um, and so I was looking for needles and I found um, the, I forgot what brand that was but uh, I took the little box out that came with the serger to see what kind of needles it came with and the whatever brand it was I looked it up online and um, apparently they the you can get like a hundred uh, like a bulk order of them for $44 and then I thought well that seems kind of pricey but when I looked at the um, smaller packages of those same needles I realized that was actually a pretty good deal because you could get 10 of them for about $10 or $12 so 100 for $44 really you were kind of saving and I think I'm gonna I personally would not buy that many because I don't sew enough to need that many replacement needles but I am going to get it for our library because we have six machines and plus that serger. So um, I think it would be a, a good investment for us to, to buy it in bulk. But um, okay, so just did a little bit of chatting there. Um, let's see. Um, let me go over my machine. All right, my puppy dog that's in my lap, she's going to have to get up. I'm sorry, but... That's just the way it's going to be. I'm, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to find somewhere to, to go while I do this. Um, all right. Um, some interesting things that I found out when I inspected my machine. I'm going to scoot it over here. And do a little bit of lighting here. Um, I have a nice little... You're going to have to move, dog. She's not being cooperative. Actually, I'm going to turn the camera around. You don't need to see me. You just need to see my machine. All right. Um, everybody's going to have one of these on their machine. Um, I think this extra light might not be a good idea right now, so I'm going to turn it off. Um, there is a line that you can actually feel that's on here and I never paid attention to the fact that it was there if you line it up exactly straight up and down with the side of your machine you will notice that probably should just hold on to it that it actually puts your needle at the exact position it needs to be in order to thread it and I, I never, never knew that. I never read my manual until the other day. And then I, I was like, oh, well, that's nifty. I don't know if all machines have that. But look and see. Look at your manual. See if that's a nice little thing to know. I mean, especially if you're having trouble getting it lined up. Because this is the needle threader. Um, if you need to get it exactly lined up for that to be able to pull it through. Um, oh, you're welcome, Mitzi. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing what you can learn when you read your manuals. I know I'm I'm horrible about that, too. I, I want to just get going and start using whatever it is I purchased. I don't want to read every little thing in it, you know. But, uh, wow, you know, that was kind of cool. Zoe, she's fussing at me. No, ma'am, you're just going to have to go somewhere and do something, dog. You can't be interrupting me. Um, so that was really interesting to find out. Um, 
And um, another little thing that I thought was interesting, when you buy one, if you're lucky, if they didn't like jip you, you usually get a flathead screwdriver for you to be able to undo certain screws like this one or this one. Because this one's for um, your needle replacement. This one's to change out some of the pressure feet. Well, I uh, was cleaning out a um, sewing um, uh, box that my mother-in-law had given me full of all of her stuff. Because um, she gave me her old sewing machine. Because she didn't use that stuff anymore. And I found this token in there and I thought oh this is really cool I remember Aladdin's castle I used to go to that place in the mall when I was a kid and and I would um, play the video games and I thought that was an odd thing to have in her sewing kit oh my let's decline that phone call <laughs> um, but it's very useful it's good to have coins because it acts as a like a flathead screwdriver if you need to unscrew the things and and even under here and um, my manual actually points that out to use a coin to um, unscrew those so I thought well okay that's why she had that in there that's that's kinda handy and, and it's better than um, actually having money you know you don't have to go search through your coin purse for a coin so I'm gonna keep that with my my stuff because I thought that was kinda handy to have and kinda neat because sometimes it's tight spaces in here trying to undo things so having a longer screwdriver you know it kinda makes it difficult sometimes so um, and it works just as well because they don't want you to overly tighten the screws for your needles and so forth anyway so that will I think that'll help a little bit with people tightening that stuff too much so that was pretty interesting to find out um, and um, also in winding the bobbin it it showed a certain way of winding it and I kinda wanna test that to see um, not quiet and so we um, I want to test it because they did it a certain way and I thought it, it kind of didn't matter um, how you want you know how you set up your bobbin to wind it oh goodness I'm sorry you're gonna have to go dog okay had to run her out of the room can't hear anything with her barking. All right, so um, I'm gonna kind of go through that real quick too. Um, I think it would probably make a difference too on making sure that you um, do a good job with winding your bobbin. I'm gonna use. Uh, we already talked about the actual how how important it is to have um, the correct bobbin. Uh, 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 dog. This is just perfect. My husband's talking on the phone to someone. Hey, I know you think somebody's here and nobody's here. Here, why don't you get up here? All right, so I'm going to unthread my machine real quick. No, Zoe. Oh my gosh. All right, so I was showing last week. Hey, Linda. And Marion's watching too. I was showing you how you look at the numbers up here to see which way. This is just, you need to go outside if you're going to be barking dog. Um, to see the correct way of winding and setting up your bobbin. Um, so here's the thread and um, the numbers showing you where you're supposed to set it up. And we're going to wrap it around here a certain way. Um, and the, what I found was... That, Golly, Zoe, quiet, um, is, I'm really sorry about this, <laughs> trying to show you this, um, but they are showing that it needs to come from here. I sometimes would set my bobbin where the thread was on this side instead of on this side, and I thought it didn't make a difference, but they're showing you to make sure that it's coming from on this side of the bobbin. And I'm just kind of curious of how much of a difference that's going to make. So we're going to wrap it around like it said 
here in the picture the thread comes straight and then crosses over I know my hands are in the way and I'm gonna have to cut my thread kind of short because I've pulled it out awful long so I'll have to wind it back up in there and they show that whenever you're uh, putting it in your bobbin here you do it on this side also where they're both like on the inside instead of like I usually would do mine from this side um, so they're showing that you do it on here so I thought well the manual shows you to do it this way so I'm gonna try it out just out of curiosity and the plastic bobbins are only gonna have one hole okay so I've inserted it in there and then you have to pull it forward so now I'm gonna have to sit down to do this part so and you don't want it to have a whole lot of slack so you want to do it nice and tight like that let's see if I can get my foot to the actual sewing pedal here so many wires okay so you initially want to wind it enough that it um, gets nice caught up in there so this little string doesn't fall down into it and you want to cut it kind of short and once you get that I'm actually I want to look at this from the side so I'm going to lower this because we want to make sure it's nice and even when we're winding it so that's as close as I can get but I'm going to see if it's going to let me zoom in there we go and I'm going to see um, usually you can stick your finger in here and bounce it to if it's only doing more on one end and not the other you can kind of tap it to make sure that it you know if it doesn't do it even I guess it's winding about the same. That's pretty good. And then when it starts getting full, you want to slow down. All right, I think that's pretty good. It will stop on you whenever it's completely wound. So um, I'm just going to cut that off there. So it's always good to have extra bobbins wound while you're sewing. Um, I usually don't, and I, I usually end up having to stop and wind um, uh, in the middle of something, which... Um, is not necessarily the most fun thing that in the world to have to do. So um, I'm going to keep mine. Come on. Oh dear. Here, I'm just going to pull it out because I did something funny. All right, so I'm going to keep it there and thread it over and under and over that. And then I'm going to make sure you have my little mark on the side. For those of you who weren't here earlier, there's a mark on the top. Of, well not on the top but on your knob there is a mark there and if you line it up straight and up and down with your machine then you'll know that this is at the position your little hook is at the right position to hook that over and whenever you go to thread let's see move that out of the way when you go to thread here with the threader it's at the right position to pull your um, thread through and another neat little trick I'm going to show you that I learned when you're placing your bobbin in um, with this particular one since it's a, mine's a drop-in instead of one of the metal ones um, you always place them in there with your thread on this side not on this side 
So you always want for the drop ends for it to go in that way. And you just drop it in on this one. And there's a little, you can't really see it. I don't know how many of y'all have one like this. Oops. I'll have to raise it a little bit more so you can see. Bumping my knee. But um, you, you put it underneath this and line it up with the little hole there. Now, something I never knew about. I'm gonna put, actually, that thread is kind of long the one on the bobbin. Let's see. Um, and I'm going to get my little tiny scissors here. I probably should just pick my bobbin up, but I'm not going to because I'm being lazy. But once you get it in there, and I pop my cover back on, the way I used to do it before is um, I would just lower my needle. It would pick it up and pull it up, and then I'd use some scissors to slide under there or something small to pull this one loose. Well, in my manual, it shows you holding on to your thread this direction and then just loosely and then you turn this and it pulls it up and then you pull your thread and there it is it pulls it up for you so there's your bobbin thread I didn't have to use scissors to slide underneath there to get it isn't that cool I never knew you could do it that way I never noticed anyone doing you know when I've watched videos I've never noticed anyone doing that and I thought that was really cool um, so that was another neat little thing um, to learn about your machine so I'm um, some of you guys are probably going oh I've, I've known that forever you just now figured that out <laughs> I was, like I said I'm one of those people that um, I just, I like to get going immediately on stuff. I don't like to read a lot of directions. Okay, so now we're going to focus on your settings on your machine. And um, a lot of times this is kind of confusing in the beginning. I know it was pretty, pretty confusing to me. Um, mine has a lot of different um, stitch patterns that you can do. And it is color-coded. Um, so uh and has the like the SS1 it's on the it's on the side here for this dial and then the other one the green SS2 is on this side so of course you're going to be turning it to in order to get these but um the basic stitches um this dial in the middle that I turn um that one actually um the two that I'm looking at is the two that's here because that doesn't, that's what it's referring to is the numbers, the top numbers here. The blue numbers, um, that's for like the 14 through the 25 and so forth. And then if you notice, there's more numbers underneath. The inside numbers are for this row right here. But you can't do those unless you turn this knob to this position to get it. So, um, otherwise, these numbers right here, the, the 4, 3, 2, and 1, that has to do with how long your stitch is going to be when you're sewing. Typically, you know, 1 is, is not ever really, very, very rarely. I think I, I did that and also F. I did F whenever I was doing some quilting. But before quilting, I never used those settings. 2 would be about as low as I would go because you don't want really really short stitches um, typically I'm gonna zoom in so y'all can see um, you don't want really really short stitches most of the time the most common and the most often what you're gonna use is around a three four is the longer one and I use that a lot um, and it's really recommended on bulky when you're sewing through a lot of fabric um, if you're doing, say, um, some quilting, or you're doing, um, say, an oven mitt, um, things that are going to be quite thick. Um, there's even a cool um, bowl. Um, 
it's like a hot pad type thing, but it's it's what something you can put your hot bowl in and eat your your food from your bowl by holding it. And when these little, when I've made those before, they're so layered too with all the batting and stuff in it to keep from burning your hands. Um, you you need that longer stitch. So the four is where you're going to usually be. But I notice a lot of times I teeter between the three and the two, just depending. Three's the most common. And that's just totally how long of a stitch you're going to have. Um, so that's what that is for. And not everyone's is going to be set up the same way. But I bet you anything, uh, if you look at your manual and it says the stitch, um, when it has to do with the stitch length dial, that's, that's what that does. This is for buttons. I I looked at my manual. I didn't know what it was for. But it's something you adjust for doing buttons. Um, on top, this one, it's got like a little zigzag type, um, let's see here, I want to lift this up some more and tilt it so you can see. Um, that's got a kind of a zigzag, let me get some more light here. Um, this one is called your, um, stitch width, which... That on, I don't know why it would do that to me, but this would confuse me with my length. I don't know why, because length is totally the length of it. And they obviously have a picture of a zigzag to give you an idea of what they're talking about is width, the width of the stitch. Um, this one has a little mark on it too, this little solid mark on top. That's going to be pretty typical, um, and that's the center. And that's another thing, let me show you, on your machine. Which I thought was. Um, and some of you guys are going to have an actual, instead of a knob like me, you'll have an actual switch up here that you'll switch over here or over here or keep it in the middle. And that's where your needle is going to move. My needle is in the middle right now. Now, if I switch it over here all the way to the five, which is a higher number, it goes to the left. If I move it back to the middle, I'm in the middle. If I move it to zero, it goes all the way to the right. So that's that's the position of your needle. So um, and you'll want to change that depending on what kind of. Uh, oh, Marsha's here. Hi, Marsha and Terry. Hi. Um, you'll want to adjust those um, whenever you're doing different things, especially different stitch patterns and so forth too. Um, and be sure to play with it. Have a basket of fabric nearby that's leftover fabrics from projects. I've got a really large one here that I just toss all kinds of stuff in that's from projects. Um, but you don't want little tiny strips, just um, slightly bigger pieces. Like I had too many squares from something. Um, I was test marking um, with a fabric marker. And so I don't want to use that for anything else. So... I keep it for that. All right, the last dial that that's important right here is the tension. So this is really important when it comes to sewing and you end up with um, like loose, your stuff is really loose and it's not tight. You're going to be working with this and changing it depending on how your machine is sewing. Um, right now mine's on five. Uh, that's kind of because of the type of sewing I was doing last. I was, um, last night I was doing some thicker type sewing. I was sewing through, um, a couple of pieces of fabric plus some batting. So, um, that's why I had it on five. So I wouldn't typically have it on there. Um, and let me show you real quick. You want to like if you're getting ready to sew again and I'm say I'm not going to be sewing with um, well, I want y'all to be able to see better than that um, with just regular cotton fabric and I'm not going to be um, using batting well you just get a, a piece of fabric and fold it in half of what you would be working with and we're gonna see and test it out. And I'm going to start with that in my fabric. Let's see if I can find my sewing foot here. 
and I'm gonna check it real quick. I'm gonna sew a little bit and see what it looks like. Let's see here. Turn it all the way up there. I'm gonna cut it off on the side here. And that looks pretty straight. I don't see anything. And I'm actually pretty surprised. My tension seems to be pretty decent on there. I don't I think I might barely see it peeking through on the bottom here. It's kind of hard to tell, actually. Yeah, I can see it better on my screen here. See, there's a tiny bit of it peeking through. And see, this is on the bottom side of my fabric. This is the top. So, um, my tension looks like it's... I'm trying to look and see. Hmm. It sure does zoom in, doesn't it? Compared to your eyes. It almost seems like you can see it on both sides, really. Let's see. I'm going to see it with my own eyes. Because that, that that's kind of weird. It looks, with when I'm just using my eyes to look at it, mm, no, the top looks good. I'm just barely, barely seeing it. I wish it was more obvious. If, say if it was really showing through bad on the bottom of it, then um, on if, if you ever notice that for your tension dial, um, let's see, um, if you can see your thread on the bottom, then, um, it's too loose. So you need to, um, go to a smaller number. So this might be easier to remember. If you see it on the bottom, then the number needs to be smaller. If you see it on top, it needs to go larger. So right now it's on five. Let's see. And so that means I would need to go smaller. And I would only go one number at a time. I'm thinking four is what typically mine is on when I'm sewing just regular um, cotton fabric. And this is a little bit thicker cotton fabric than what I usually work with. It's it's actually a little bit nicer. It's um it's pretty sturdy compared to some of the stuff I've I've bought. Because I've bought some really cheap stuff at Walmart before. So We'll do this again and do a little test and see. Okay. Cut that off. So, there's my top. And I don't know that I can see a difference looks about the same to me but really honestly it's it's sewing good um, and the main thing that's different from today um, sewing today than yesterday is I um, I changed my number over here to a three for the length of my stitch and I had it on a four last night when I was doing the quilted stuff so um, I think because the quilted stuff I was working with had really thin batting in it um, that's why the tension wasn't too bad. Now, if I had been working um, with something even thicker, I may have had to adjust my tension. And that's whenever you do a little test, so sew something, you know, test it and see what it's looking like. If you see it on the bottom of your fabric, then you know you need to go smaller. And if you see it on the top, then you need to go larger on your number. Um, so... That's just that basic stuff there. Um, and I want to go over also, um, let's see, um, the different pressure feet that you would typically get with your machine. Um, I'm not exactly sure what mine came with. Let me move some things around. Um, I guess I could glance at my manual and it would show me real quick. Um, mine was one of the ones that came with more. And now that I have bought these other ones, actually, I'll have double of this stuff if, if I, 
All right, so I know I spent a little more bit more money on mine because I wanted to have um, a walking foot. So um, this one came with my machine, and it looks a lot like the ones that I bought for um, the library. That one's very handy. Um, if you're going to be doing, this came with my machine also, and it also came with um, two needles. If you ever want to work, I have never done this before. Um, I think it'd be something interesting to show and try out. Um, but it came with two needles. Um, and um, so I want to try that out at one of my classes here sometime soon. So if I ever switch over to, to that, then I'll definitely need to this. People keep calling me during my class. Um, I'm not sure that I know those people, but I uh, will check back later. So um, that came with my machine too, and um, there is a hole on top of my machine right here that I would put this in for the other bobbin. Or not bobbin, but the other um, thread. So um, that'll be interesting to try out sometime. But that came with it. Um, I bought a big set of... Um, of, of uh, different feet and stuff. This also came with it. This is for doing buttons. Um, that's something else I want to try out um, to uh, show you how to use one of these as far as making buttonholes and then also um, I think you have to put this darning plate on when you're doing um, buttons also if you're sewing buttons. I was just kind of reading through it and these are some of the things that came with my machine also. And luckily I got some tweezers with mine. Um, not all of them come with tweezers. This comes with your walking foot. Um, I've, I haven't yet to use it. Um, and then this is for also quilting. Um, this is free for freehand quilting. Um, and then this one, I, no, I can't remember if this one came with it or not. But um, uh, let me see. Uh, this is for doing by and like rolling a, a whole doing a hem it rolls the fabric for you for doing hems and stuff I haven't actually got to try those out yet but those are some of the basic ones um, and something you will probably use that usually comes with your machine is um, for doing zippers and a zipper foot's um, pretty handy to have too so I'm glad that they usually put those in with it and then um, also, um, if you're doing applique, or actually, I think this is for something else. This looks a lot like one of the applique button ones that I have, but um, they do usually give you a pretty good selection of some of the basic ones whenever you get your machine. And I recommend trying them out. I mean, uh, just to see how they work and stuff, because you can learn a lot about your machine just by trying the different things that come with it. Um, and this was the set I got. It was 42. Um, I got it because it had uh, some different ones in it that I wanted. but And I bought these little things to put it in. Does anyone have any... Uh, this is kind of what I wanted to cover. So um, I wanted to see if anybody has any questions. Um, and there's my manual. Um, do y'all have any issues with your machine that you have questions about? Or... Um, I'll give you all a minute to kind of think about it. Um, I know most of the time most people have issues with, uh, uh, it getting caught in the machine. Um, one of the things, like whenever you're sewing, um, that when you're sewing, um, you'll actually get it, some of the, it'll be knotted up underneath your fabric where you can't pull it out. Um, and then one of the things I talked about last week was if you're turning your knob here um, towards you the wrong direction, it goes under there and it grabs up extra th thread and it gets hung up in there whenever you do that. So that's a common mistake um, that you can make that causes that. Um, if you're threading your machine here on top, if it's too loose, um, if you make this too loose or if your bobbin is not wound correctly where it's loose, 
that's that's another issue that will cause it to um, get kind of hung up in there too. So you got to be careful. And if I've noticed this during my classes that if you don't get it behind this bar, which I don't know what causes it to come loose, but someone's hand might hit it or something. Um, it, let's see, we have questions. Yes, we have a problem too. Knots underneath. What causes that? Um, uh, well, that's kind of the different things that uh, it kind of depends on what what you've done. Um, typically, if you know that you were not turning your knob on the side towards you instead of away from you, um, that's one of the most common things that happens. If you know that you're always turning it the right way, which is away from you, um, then the first thing to do to troubleshoot it is to take your bobbin out, um, whatever bobbin type of bobbin that you have, take it out of your machine, make sure that it's wound correctly, um, and also, let's see, I grab one of those. Um, make sure it's evenly wound and not lopsided. This one is a little bit, um, it's it's pretty straight. This You're going to have loops and stuff if it's not wound nice, nicely. Um, it could be your bobbin not wound correctly. Um, if you have one of the bobbins that comes, that you have in the little metal case that goes inside of your machine, you may not have inserted it correctly, um, like the bobbin into it correctly. I wish I had one of those with me. Let's see, I have an old machine under here. Uh, I don't know if that one has that on it or not. But you may have not did that correctly. Um, or, see the plastic bobbins, sometimes they're not the right size. And we, we talked about that last week. Um, if it's the wrong size. Um, this, I don't think this one came, or did it come with my machine? I think it did come with my machine. The only ones um, that I, I bought was the metal ones. You've got to make sure whatever bobbin came with your machine, if you do buy other bobbins, to make sure they're the same size. Because if they're not the same height exactly, and they're not the right right size around, let's see Christy how old is mom's machine ah, and see that can make a difference too. the the model that you have if you have an unusual one um, you want to make sure if you're having issues and not having the right size bobbins you may have to go online um, and look up that model and that make make and model and make sure that you have the correct type of bobbin for it because they say that a lot in the manuals to make sure you have um, you buy bobbins made for that machine. There's quite a few universal ones out there like these, but as long as you're not you don't have one that's misshapen. Let me see if I can find one. I had um, I got a box of them, and some of them looked a little wonky, and I don't use them in my machine because I think that's probably. Let's see here. If you can see this one, um, I guess my eyes a little bit better than this. It, but if you look at the middle piece, at times it's not, it's not really straight up and down. It it it's not quite. It has some imperfections to it where it's not, because there's the little part that um, connects. See, it looks more obvious there. It's not. It's kind of a little off. As far as so it's it's going to kind of wobble around inside of your machine. Um, okay, you said that um, the helps because she has several different sizes. So um, <laughs> so uh, that can make a big difference too. Um, making sure um, if you're a little unsure which ones are the correct one for that machine. Um, you might have to break down and go online and, and buy um, some for that specific machine to make sure you got the right kind. Because um, I don't recommend using them unless you know it's, it's especially if you're having issues already um, with using those. And um, I don't know that I, I like the plastic ones as well sometimes. Um, I kind of avoid using them because I can't remember I bought some of these from uh, Walmart or somewhere 
and um, I noticed I had issues sometimes. So over 30 years ago, <laughs> wow. Well, there's a lot of old machines out there, um, and they, um, they they can work. I mean, you can um, usually find stuff for them, um, especially Singer. Um, I, I'm curious to what brand that she has, because um, Singer has an extensive uh, thing online for parts and manuals and... Uh, they 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 go way back um, as far as um, having things for your machine if they're old. Um, Kenmore, I'm not sure if they have so much. Um, you can usually find quite a bit of um, videos too about your machines um, in old manuals. You can, I know Singer. I've got my uh, 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 mother-in-law's Singer. And it doesn't quite work right. But I was able to find, because I didn't know how to thread it, because it was different from any uh, one I had ever seen before. Or, well, it's kind of like my mom's. But I found this um, directions on how to thread it. Um, but if I wanted the full manual, I was going to have to pay like $12 for the full manual, which I may end up doing. I'm not really sure. I don't need the machine, but I was curious about how it worked and so forth. Um, but, uh, a lot of times, even if it's 30 years old, a lot of those bobbins are pretty universal, like, I see what, is that the name of it? It's a universal? Is the brand name of the machine? Hmm. I'll have to look that one up. I'm, I hadn't, haven't heard of that one before. I have, um, my great-great-grandmother's treadle sewing machine. And uh, it was hers and my grandmother's. Um, and uh, it's a Davis vertical feed, which they didn't make a whole lot of them. Um, I mean, there's quite a few. If you look them up online, you can actually find quite a few um, pictures and stuff of them. They're, they're kind of different looking. Um, hmm, wait a second. I wonder if y'all would be interested in seeing what it looks like. I have it under my table here doesn't look real pretty right now because it needs to be cleaned and that's the next thing I'm going to be doing is having it clean lord it's heavy <laughs> let's see and this is and this is just the separate this is not a um, what I've got is just the top part of it the rest of it's in another room but um let's see here move some things around I just think it's real interesting the way that this one is made. Um, it's it's really quite different the the how it's made too. Oh wow, I'm learning to sew now and don't have a clue what to do. <laughs> yeah, a Goodwill shop, huh? I was wondering what. Let's see. Um. Christy, I was trying to see, um, oh, okay, she's got a picture, I guess, of the, the, uh, sewing machine, I'll have to look at that, kind of like this one, okay, I will have to Google that whenever I get done, but, um, this one, I think why it's called a vertical feed is the feed dog is made different, I'll raise it up all the way, it actually, um, on the more current machines, the feed dogs are underneath. This, this, the way this works, it actually pulls the fabric through from the top with the, with this. So, I wish I could show you. It's just kind of interesting how it moves and, but, um, anyway, it's kind of hard to see. You probably would have to Google it to see. Yeah, this one... This one's pretty old. It's, um, uh, I think when I looked it up, this particular one was probably built or made in 1904-ish time period. Um, I really need to get it cleaned. I, it's got a lot of rust and stuff on it. Um, and that's the main reason I haven't, um, gotten it up to, I want to use it eventually. But, um, I've tried all kinds of things with cleaning it, um, 
because I don't want to damage the decorative stuff that's on it because um, you could kind of see I damaged a little bit of it trying to clean it um, I wanted to preserve as much as possible it looks like a lot of like the name of it even kind of wore off um, where it said Davis vertical feed but um, I, I'm going to take it to a professional, I think, eventually, and 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 let them clean it up for me, because I want to use it, because it's it works. Um, it's it's um, thank you. Um, the neat the old ones are really neat. Um, I love looking at the different old older type machines that that's, that's out there, and I'm real excited because there's some people that own these machines that have done videos on how to thread them, how to wind the bobbin. Because this is the part for winding the bobbin. Because theirs are um, are have shuttles. They're long shaped. Um, which I don't know where that box is right now. I think it's back in the back. Um, but they they're they're quite a bit different on how you work work everything. So, um, so uh, did, was I helpful at all on answering your question? Um, is it easier to learn on an older one or new ones? They're they're basically the same, um, really. Um, as long as you know uh, how to adjust, or let's see, let me go back to the the newer machine, because all of them are going to have. You'll have to look at your manual. They're, all of them are going to have your tension dial or something that does your tension for you. So that's going to be one of the main things. And this is your upper tension for mine. Um, the lower tension, I don't have to adjust anything on mine, but the machines that come with the little um, metal case that goes around your bobbin that actually goes down inside of your machine, um, you can adjust the tension on that one uh, on that little case. There's a tiny little screw on that case that you can tighten or loosen if you're having um, tension control issues with uh, with the lower tension because this is for the upper tension. Um, generally that's the one you're going to adjust. Uh, the other one you typically don't have to adjust. Um, oh good, I'm glad. <laughs> I was just reading. Um, but with the older and newer ones, as long as you can learn where to do your tension, um, where this is the width of your um, uh, whenever you're sewing because that's why it has the zigzags um, as long as you know how to adjust the width where where that's located and the length this is the length for mine um, as long as you know where those dials are and two is typical for this machine if you want just straight and then this is for the length three is pretty typical for the length of your stitch and four is for thicker things Let's see, if you don't have a manual, you can look it up online for one. And download. Yes, sometimes you can get manuals for free. Um, Singer is a little bit harder sometimes getting them for free because I was trying to get that one from my, my, my mother-in-law's machine and I could not find a free one anywhere. But $12, I kind of feel like if I really want to figure it out, um, it might be worth it. Um, uh, let's see. And um, that's that's really about it. Um, I'm trying to think of any other tips or hint. Because um, really, having an older machine, as, lo as long as it's in good working order, um, they're just as good as an older or a newer machine. I actually prefer the um, some of the older machines because um, they're workhorses. I mean, they may be heavier and everything. My mom... She complains about hers being so heavy and hard to move around and so forth. Um, I have a puppy dog in my lap. She's panting kind of loudly. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, these, the newer ones are more... <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> that's my puppy dog. That's a reverse sneeze. It sounds pretty horrible, but that's what little chihuahuas do. Um, let's see. Thank you. Oh, okay. She sent her the links. Okay. All right. Um, so really, truly, if you've got one in good working condition, it doesn't matter if you have a newer or older one. And I highly recommend um, uh, 
thank you. <laughs> Said bless him. She, this little chihuahua, she's something else. Um, um, Googling um, videos and stuff on your machine, it, especially if you're having issues with it and you're not sure about how to do something on the machine. If someone's made a video on my grandmother's um, machine on how to how to thread it and how to wind a bobbin, I bet you anything. If you have a, a newer machine than this one, which is a hundred years old or more, I bet you anything. Someone has made a video for you showing you how to change the needle or how to fix something on it. Because um, I know the manuals. Um, they only have photos on how to do things, and uh, some of the things I want to try with mine that I've read through my manual, I think, well, written directions, directions are one thing, but actually seeing it makes a huge difference. So I'm going to look, um, and uh, I think what I might do next week is um, probably go over how to um, maybe do a buttonhole, um, because I've never done that before. And I think that would be super helpful on showing people how to do it because um, uh, I've never needed to, but I'm looking at doing a project that is uh, a shower curtain, like taking a bunch of squares and putting them together and making a shower curtain. And um, rather than um, having the little metal, um, oh, what are those called? I can't think of the the name of them, um, they have a name, and it's totally slipping my mind, I know what they are, but um, the little metal hole things that you can put on, oh gosh, what are they called, um, rather than do those, I'm a, I want to do buttonholes for the hooks areas for the um, um, shower curtain, because I, I, I'd prefer to do that, because the pieces, the little metal things I've bought before, I don't know if they're rust resistant, I think they're kind of cheap and they'll probably rust, and so I don't think water would do well on the ones that I have, so I'm, I'm going to do my holes as um, buttonholes, little small ones. So I think um, I might do a little tutorial on that for next week, um, besides um, maybe showing you how to use different things, on how to do different settings and so forth to do different things on your machine, because um, there's even some other helpful things. Um, let's see, where my direct I wrote myself some information. Um, oh, like setting up for the two needles. Maybe we'll do that. Um, and a blind hem stitch on how to maybe to do that or something. Because um, that's kind of useful if you ever want to um, say you bought some pants and they're too long. And you want to take them up and make them shorter. The blind hem stitch is a stitch that you would do um, that would... Um, they're kind of like for dress pants where you can't see the stitch from the other side. So that that might be interesting. Um, I, I'm going to play with those and see see how long it takes to do some of those. Alrighty, um, I guess that's it unless um, you guys have any other questions um, for this time. Um, I'll do it next Friday again at uh, 1 o'clock. Um, Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you, Mitzi. I'm glad I, I was able to to uh, show you some stuff. Um, I'll be looking to see if I can find out. This is really helping me, too, um, to learn more about just different things that I've never took the time to learn myself because I, I'm always in a hurry um, trying to um, just get projects done. And so I would, wouldn't learn how to do that new thing until I go to do the new project, and it slows you down a lot. So... Um, this has given me some information too, so if y'all think of anything that you want to know about your machine, um, so, uh, just, if you want to put comments in there, um, in, when this video is over with, you can, if you think of something later that you want, um, to learn about, um, on your machine, just let me know and, um, in the comments, or you can message the, our library page. And just say, hey, Miss Opal, could you talk about this next time? Because I'd be happy to get some ideas from you guys. <laughs> Mitzi said, you should start a YouTube channel. Just think about it. Well, I would if I didn't have a job that I worked 40 hours a week. I think that would be something fun to do. I really do. But 
I'm I'm so caught up with trying to come up with good ideas of things to do for <laughs> for the library. <laughs> I don't think I would be very good at, at having time to do the other stuff. So that thank you though, Mitzi. <laughs> so um oops, I guess I'll switch over. Y'all probably tired of looking at my um my uh machine there. And this is the little one that was making all the noises that was causing problems, huh, Zoe? Yeah, she's a little mess pot. But, um, okay, until uh, next week. Um, uh, and like I said, just uh, shoot me any questions that y'all might have or things that you want to me to cover next week, okay? All right, bye.